Well, then good afternoon and congratulations, you made it. My name is Ken Krell. You're about to experience a whole bunch of new thoughts this afternoon. So we have a lot of notes you'll be taking along the way. First question I want to ask you guys is this. Who paid more to the IRS last year than you put in your kids' bank accounts? Let me see your hands. Yeah, all right. Any pain there, by the way? Okay, you guys are here for what big reason? What do you want to do? What was that? Save on taxes? Okay. Now, I want to make one thing clear as we go through this. Okay, there's a difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance. It's about 10 years. So, right? And it's not funny if you're doing it wrong. So today, everything that we talk about is, is fully legal, fully ethical within the confines of the law that was written by Congress, the people that supposedly we elected. So what we're talking about is going to seem a bit renegade. Are you okay with renegade? You can, you can talk to me. It's okay. Is it okay with Renegade? Yeah. All right, good. That's what we're going to do. Next question. Oh, by the way, I want to talk about your kid's bank account. That means whether it's a new house, whether it's anything you care about, the, I the idea is this. We're funding a bankrupt company and getting nothing back from it for the, for the most part. So are you concerned, by the way, with what's going on with, um, with what's going on in blockchain and with crypto over the next few years with the IRS? Anybody concerned about that? You should be because... As I was talking to my friend Tim this morning, and by the way, this is my friend Tim over there. Say hi, Tim. <laughs> I want to make sure he gets some love. He's got some handouts for you, which I guess you can pass out now at any, at any, po any point you feel comfortable doing it. Uh, here's the thing. Remember back in the old days before you and I were even a glimmer of, of awareness in your parents, it was something called prohibition. Remember that? Well, you don't remember that. You're not old enough. Neither am I, although I'm pushing it, I think. Here's the thing. They made prohibition illegal, remember? Then what happened? They changed their mind. You know why they changed their mind? Because they could tax it. So what they're going to do in the crypto side of things is they're going to go ahead and they're still trying to figure their stuff out, but is it going to get better or worse for us? It's going to get worse for us. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So today we're going to fix that. Real quickly, for the past 30 years, I've trained entrepreneurs how to make money both in real estate, uh, in, in business, online, and so on. I've traveled all over the world, done millions of hours of projects internationally. Today, I'm the founder and, and chief evangelist of TotalWealthStrategies.com, where we help you not just defer your taxes, but pr protect yourself from the people that want to take all of it away from you. That's really what it's all about. I'm an evangelist. I am not, by the way, an attorney. I am not an accountant, and I long, no longer play one on TV. Okay, I have been burned by the people that don't know what in the hell they're talking about. Can anybody relate to that? All right, you guys have heard about offshore structures. I'll talk about those in a few minutes. They're wonderful in concept, but they will screw you in the end. I can tell you that right now. So a lot of the things that, that seem really kind of fun and exciting, like moving to Puerto Rico, they work, but they don't. So we're going to talk about what actually will work. In the title of this presentation, we talk about the Rockefellers. This is John D., the big guy. America's first billionaire. In the 1900s, he created the, the greatest wealth ever. Now, about 170 years, or whatever many years later, 170 descendants later, about a century later, the net worth of the Rockefeller fortune exceeds 16 billion with a B dollars as of 2016. Do you think he knew a little bit about wealth preservation? Just a little bit. Rockefeller was freaking brilliant, not just in business, but in preserving it and making sure that his wealth stayed with him and with his family, not with the IRS and the government. Would you say that's a better risk? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today and how we did it. This is part of what his structure was with, with Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan. They put things into different structures. We'll talk about some of those structures today and how they actually work for you. And my, my notes are not working, so that's okay. Let me also introduce you to this guy. He's known as the billionaire who wasn't. Anybody know his name? I'm just forgetting his name. I was hoping somebody would here in the room. Um, you'll see his name in a, in a little bit. Chuck Feeney is his name, actually. He lives in San Francisco. Have you ever heard of, I'll tell you more about him at, towards the end, but the guy's pretty brilliant. Have you ever heard of the DF, uh, DFS, Duty Free Shops? He's one of the founders of it years ago began in Hong Kong, created billions upon billions of dollars. I'll tell you a story a little bit later, but what he did and how he structured his life is brilliant, and that's something you'll be able to do as well. So there's three keys to wealth creation and preservation. How many keys? This is your math test, okay. The first one, the first one is asset protection, 
Okay, by the way, all those are, are free to use videos. I mean, free to, you, by the way, you can have pictures of all these slides if you want. Um, next is tax benefits. So we want to protect our assets. We also want to make sure that the benefits, benefits we have with taxes are going to allow you to live and keep all the money that you've got and deploy it any way that you do want. Number three is privacy. Does that matter to you guys? Yeah. And by the way, is that a precious commodity these days? Yeah. And it's eroding every minute, unfortunately. So let's talk about asset protection first. You may have heard of this small company called McDonald's. Back in the, in the late 1900s, God, it sounds like a long time ago, this woman named Stella Liebig bought a cup of hot coffee at McDonald's. You may have heard about her. Dear Stella decided that she would go ahead and take the lid off the coffee in her freaking car, put the coffee between her legs. What do you think happened? She spilled it all over herself, burned 20% of her legs, sued McDonald's and got it. It was, it was like $2.1 million or whatever that magic number was. It may be actually a bit more than that. $180,000 in compensatory damages on top of that. McDonald's could have settled, by the way, for $20,000. They didn't because they thought it was stupid. What was stupid, guys? The law. Now, by the way, <laughs> I think McDonald's now has new labels on their cups. It says, caution, do not apply to groin area. Okay? Was that her stupidity? Come on. Yeah, but who lost? McDonald's did, and so did all of us. This is um, our friends at Anheuser-Busch. They were sued by this one guy, I swear to God, I can't make this stuff up, because he wasn't getting the girls for mental distress, he sued them. Why didn't he get the girls? Because he was too drunk. All the commercials said they get the girls. He lost. But again, who won in this situation, you guys? The lawyers. The lawyers. This, this one takes, takes the cake. A law judge, an administrative law judge in Washington, D.C., took his pants in to get tailored at his local dry cleaners. They took care of the pants, but the dry cleaners had multiple locations, so they delivered them to the wrong location. Innocent mistake. A couple of days later, he gets his pants back, decides that they're not his anymore. Yeah, I know. I couldn't believe it either, right? Sues them for $67 million. Dragged on for four years. Yeah, now these poor, this poor immigrant families, I believe the name was the Changs, they had to manage all this. Can you, would that put you out of business in, in a typical business? Not cool, not fair, it sucks. But that's what's going on in our society. By the way, when it came time for him to be re, to re, reappointed in Washington, D.C., he did not get reappointed. So what did he do? He sued for un, what was it, unjust whatever the hell it was. I mean, it just, this is the insanity that we're dealing with. This uh, stairway in New York City, in New York subway system, scared some lady. She fell down and she sued the MTA. This is the deal, guys. The big, qu oh, I gotta tell you about Starbucks. You've heard of Starbucks, right? They got sued because the guy that bought this cold drink decided there wasn't enough liquid in there. It wasn't really 12 ounces of liquid because the ice displaced the liquid. And therefore, it was, it was not uh, truth in advertising. It was deceptive because it wasn't really 12 ounces of whatever the iced coffee or whatever it was he had. This is the BS that we're dealing with in our society. There are 91,000, by the way, personal injury attorneys in our country right now. They make 30 to 40 percent of every claim that is filed. Do you think there's a motivation for them to sue your ass? You can talk to me. Yeah, I know. Oh, shit. But it's true, okay? By the way, we have 5 percent of the world's population and 94 percent of the world's lawyers. Congratulations. And legal, and legal actions as well. Number one legal action, by the way, is slip and falls. If any of you want to buy real estate, you're going to have a few of these. 25,000 of them per day filed in the U.S. It's a business. It's a business. You think crypto is a big business? Shit, this is it's incredible. You're going to, and by the way, I got sued for this before too. And I have insurance. Insurance is great, right? So you get sued, the insurance company defends you. Then what happens to your rates next year? Right? So who wins? The lawyers. Congratulations, right? Do you want to protect yourself from this madness? That would be good. There should be a little bit more enthusiasm on that. I mean, right? Trust me. The minute you get your ass sued, you'll be a lot more enthusiastic. But the problem is the minute you get sued, what happens? It's too freaking late. So I want to take care of this for you right now. You, in, the, in our business, in any business you're involved in, whether it's blockchain, crypto, even if it's a dry cleaning store, you're going to get all this madness. And by the way, even a close family members will sue you as well. Trust me. Okay, it happens everywhere. So between, between all the things you're seeing on the screen, the bottom line, guys, is not if you're going to be sued, it's 
when you're going to be sued and for how much. It comes right down to that. 36 to 53% of, of all businesses are involved in at least one lawsuit e each year. 90% are involved in a lawsuit at any given time. These, and by the way, when I talked to our corporate attorney about this, he was like, this can't possibly be true. Show me the citing. It's in Forbes back in, in 2014. Okay? They believe that your money is their money. Isn't that fair? Listen, I was in the mortgage banking business in the U.S. Virgin Islands a number of years back, and we would lend money to pe people to buy houses. We would do millions of dollars every single month in, in loans. The people in the U.S. Virgin Islands thought it was my money. Yay! If only. I was selling stuff to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. It wasn't my money. We, they were all securitized. But guess what they thought they could do to me? Sue my ass. Now, I'm told I have a nice one, but that doesn't exactly help, okay? Cryptocurrency, by the way, here's the bad news. It's considered property which means that it can be seized when you lose in a lawsuit. Should we do something about that? Look, your eyes went pop, okay? Yeah, it's, I mean, you think you're private? We'll show you about how, how, how that is. So we already talked about this. It's when you're gonna be sued, and I promise you, you will be sued. It's the end of the day on that, okay? In fact, they say that, that the words LLC stand for Lodge Lawsuit Coming, okay? Now, we talked about privacy. Privacy number is, is significant, yes? But it's a farce. Okay, do you think that your cryptocurrency is private and anonymous? Anybody think that? That's what blockchain is supposed to be about, isn't it? You guys are looking at me like, like you're, I'm, I'm freaking you out already. Okay, don't worry, I'm going to make it okay, I promise you. But have you heard that, that, that is, this is actually considered property now? The IRS considers it property? So if you lose in a lawsuit, they're going to take it away from you. And if you think it's anonymous, which was the original plan, think again. The IRS decided that they would go ahead and subpoena Coinbase's database, and they've got it. Apparently in, Oct in August, 80,000 emails were sent out warning people about what the IRS is going to do. Are you private anymore? No. They will find all your assets, I promise you. A decent private investigator will find everything you have. And if they think you got a lot of money, will they hire a PI? Say yes. Yeah. Believe me. Okay? So that's the bad news, my friends, okay? And life can suck that way. Do we agree? Yeah. All right, should we fix it? Mm -hmm. I thought so. All right, how do we fix it? Should we, get a, should we put things into a corporate structure? Nice idea, right? But LLCs don't do anything for you. P the attorneys these days can pierce just about any corporate structure out there that's not going to work for you. I told you LLC stands for large lawsuit company. Not going to happen, okay? Lawsuit, look, corporations are a great idea, but they're not the idea. You'll want to use a corporate structure for certain reasons, but not for this. How about going offshore? Does that sound like a good idea? Come on, doesn't that sound sexy? Let's have an offshore company, right? Like Apple does in Ireland. Yeah, baby. The only thing is that the minute that any court finds you on offshore, they think you're hiding something. When the crash hit a few years back, remember the GFC? In Australia, they call it the GFC, Global Financial Crisis. It sounds so much better than losing your ass, right? But when that happened, I had set up a, a corporate structure years and years ago overseas. I think it was in Nevis or wherever, whatever island it was. Um, and all the money got depleted. I used it in my real estate projects. When we went to file the bankruptcy that came from losing all those properties, the judge looked at it and go, oh, you're offshore. Where's all the money? And nothing I could say or do would, could actually make them feel comfortable that I really was broke, that I lost all the assets when the, when the crash hit. So they thought I was committing fraud. Offshore can really hurt you. So don't do anything that's going to be on the shady side or even on the gray area because the minute a, a judge or someone that can, that can make a decision on your future gets involved, who wins? Not you. I can promise you that. So offshore, not so great. All right? So what if you were able to stop a lawsuit before it ever happened? If someone looked at you and said, nah, we can't sue them, we'll get nothing out of it, would that be beneficial to you guys? Yeah. Come on, say yes. All right. I am freaking you guys out. I can see that right now. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Why do people want to sue you? What, aside from, from the fact that maybe they think there's something there, what, what, what do they think about you that they could get away with suing you? They think that you're built of, come on, Cryptocurrency. cryptocurrencies and gold, right? Okay, they think you're loaded with gold, okay? So that we have to avoid that. There's also, by the way, a tax threat to all your currency, all right? So we're going to take care of that as well. That's our, that's our tax deferring situation. The IRS wants how much of your money? All of it, right? So they're going to give you tax on your airdrops, your hard forks, your mining income, your staking, your lending, your margin training. Here are tax, there are tax, everywhere tax, right? And of course, we know it's going to get much better for us because they are on our side, aren't they? 
always. You see, you drank the Kool-Aid too. So we got to fix that. There is, by the way, I understand, a new simplified tax form coming. It's just two lines. How much did you make? Line two, send it in. That usually gets a better laugh than it did, okay? But we've got to make it better. Do we agree? Okay, all right, just checking, all right? So they also want taxes on any gains of transfers. If you're going to switch Ethereum for Bitcoin or whatever other currency, they're going to screw you on that too. Congratulations. It ain't pretty. There's now a new business in crypto that's all about how do we align all of this to even keep track of it all. It's enough to make your head spin. So we got to fix that. Now, before we go any further, let me make one thing abundantly clear. If you're thinking that, that any kind of tax avoidance or deferral or anything like that to pay less is un-American, this is my buddy, Drudge Learned Hand. Now, I say he's my buddy because I love everything he says. Over and over again, the courts have said that there is nothing sinister in arranging your fares to keep taxes as low as possible. There's no patriotic duty to reduce your tax, to, to pay more than you should. He goes on to say, everyone does it, rich and poor alike, and all do right, for nobody owes any public duty to pay more than the law demands. Now, with all these people running around and running for whatever office they're running for, talking about the rich people not paying taxes, the only reason why they're, that they're saying that stuff is because they're not what? Rich. The only people bitching about it are the ones who haven't got it. The minute you're rich, do you want to pay tax? And, when, and if you're broke, do you want to pay tax? So it's all American. The only reason why the big corporations haven't paid tax is because Congress legislated for those incentives, period. Okay, we can make them bad, but that's what the laws give us. So let's use the laws to our benefit. Do we agree? Okay. All right. So the solution. Are we ready? Are we ready? All right. Okay, I thought you might be. Okay, <laughs> yeah, hang on, we got I want. There's the wink. All right, all right. So here we go. We're gonna follow what the Rockefellers have done. Nelson Rockefeller, former vice president, former governor of New York, says the secret to success is to own nothing but control what everybody, everything, everything. I want you guys to be completely and totally broke. Are you okay with that? Say yes. All right. Here's how we do it. We create something called a trust. Have you heard of trust before? All right, here's the thing. The trusts that you've heard of before don't work. I know this because there's only one trust that, we've, that we know of because we've copyrighted it that allows you to, to take care of all the, of the, the evils that are out there without being penetrated. Most trusts that are out there do not give you the protection you think you're going to have. They can easily be pierced. So this is what it's all about. Now, by the way, trusts have been around since the days of Henry VIII. They, they're, they're embedded in the laws of antiquity long before the U.S. Constitution. So there's history that is not going to be overcome. Kennedy uh, has put all their assets into trust over a billion dollars, and it said, by the way, that the bulk of the family's worth is held in dozens of those trusts, which range from tens of thousands to as much as $25 million. And they say that his choice to place his fortune in trust was probably the single most critical reason why the family wealth is still around today. Think they know a little bit about money? Yep. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow what they've done in a way that works for us today, right? Main advantage is I don't want to spend a lot of time on the mechanics of this because the most important thing is that it works. Am I right? Say yes. Okay, for the engineers in the room, I have all the details in the world. Our chief counsel is with us at our booth, so you can ask all the questions you want. But today we're not going to talk, we're not going to talk about mechanics as much as we're going to talk about the benefits so you can save money and protect yourself. Good? Okay, because otherwise your head will spin like mine did. The most important thing about this that you understand is that you don't have to do a whole hell of a lot of reporting because it's private. Okay, it's not like a, like a corporation or a, or a public corporation. You set it up once, you don't have to do it year after year like a lot of other structures do, so it's a lot less expensive in the long run. Um, and by the way, you do, not, you, you do have privacy because, again, it is private. It's not publicly recorded. Um, and one other thing, by the way, if you're going to get married, you don't need a prenup. And if you die, there's no need for, for probate. It's all handled that way. It lasts forever if you set it up that way, which you'll do. So there's a huge amount of benefit on that. Okay, it's pretty amazing. Let's keep going here. There are three parts to a trust, or three parties to a trust, and here's where, and here's where it gets messy, okay? Because you see you've got somebody called the settler, who's the guy that creates the trust, there we go. Then there's the trustee who runs the trust, and there's the beneficiary, which might be your kids or your parents or somebody you care about that's actually the beneficiary of the trust. The problem with most trusts is that typically the, the person who creates it and the person that's the trustee is the same person. Do you think that when someone sees that, they're gonna say, ah, shenanigans, bullshit, we got gotcha. you. And that's what happens with like 99% of all the trust in America. 
No one knows that, but they're called the grantor trust. You win that on, on any kind of a, of, of a trivial pursuit game. 99% of the trusts in America are set up that way and you're screwed, but no one knows that. So now you do. You think you're building a wall of brick and you can hide all your assets in it. But in reality, you got a house of straw, okay? And that is wonderful until you get sued and you lose and it's like, oh shit, what did I pay all that money for to the lawyer? So I want you to make sure that you're completely protected. You've got to do a Steve Jobs and think different. You've heard of him, right? This is San Francisco, right? Okay, good. My buddy, all right? So what happened is about 12 to 13 years ago, a group of, of attorneys in Texas and, and uh, accounting professionals created what I call this cocktail or secret recipe of all these different tools that fit the laws, both tax laws as well as legal laws, to give you an impenetrable protection that saves you on taxes and saves you in the court. Cool? Say yes. All right, cool. Now, the legalese for, again, all of you guys that love detail, it is called a specialized, copyrighted, non-grantor, irrevocable, complex, discretionary, spendthrift trust. I call it the benefit trust because it's just, it's just tons, full of tons of benefits. But the big key to this thing uh, is, number one, it's copyrighted, so the only, there's really only one source for it, but it's also this non-grantor thing. The trust is actually created by a third party, so you are anonymous, and you want to be anonymous, don't you? Yeah, you absolutely do. By the way, this is something that's new for most people, but it's not new. Over 30,000 of them have been, have been around. They've never been penetrated, okay? And they're still going on. We've gotten the rights to actually market it now, which has never been able to be done before. It's always been on the kind of the QT. Uh, but it's never failed to audit, never been successfully challenged, never been overturned. Sound pretty good? Okay, it meets all the, all the regulations of the law. The big structural difference is that there's something new added here called the compliance overseer which oversees the management of the trustee and the beneficiaries and everything. It can be you as well. So you could be this as well as this. But the structural difference is unique, and no one else has that, to the best of my knowledge. So that's a big difference. Before the trust, you now are in control of your destiny, you control your benefits, and you have a target on your back. After the trust, there's you. Everything goes to the trustee, which, by the way, is going to be you, right? The trustee manages the trust, which has all of your gold bullion, right? And what do you have? Freedom. That's the nature of the beast. You guys like that? So for those of you that don't like visuals, you're rich in, before, you control your fortune before, and you're a target. Congratulations. Sleep well at night tonight, right? Afterwards, you're broke. Sorry. You control your fortune, and you're not a target. Which would you rather be, rich or broke? broke. Thank you. Thank you. Okay? That's exactly the idea. Now, these four digits, 643B, IRS code, is the key to all of this. 643B is unknown by most accountants and other tax professionals because they've never gotten that high in the IRS code. They've never needed to. Most tax professionals really deal with, with the basics of filling in the forms. But 643B is brilliant. Why? Because it gives you the ability to have zero tax liability. How much liability? Yeah, you like that number? It's pretty cool. All right. So what happens is all your stock dividends, your royalties, your endowments, your rental income, your sale of your property, which includes your, crypt, includes your crypto as well, everything non-W-2, everything non-W-2 can be tax deferred for the lifetime of your life, the lifetime of your descendants, the lifetime of their descendants up to 21 years after the last person has died. That means no taxes for the rest of your life. Is that okay? All right, yeah, it's pretty cool, all right? Um, it's declared, by the way, as extraordinary dividends, which is the structure here, and, and that's considered ordinary income, which, by the way, is not taxed in that structure. So the bottom line is it goes into perpetuity. And when people say to you and they bitch to you about how their tax bill sucks and how their life is miserable and how they're getting audited and all this other bullshit, you can sit back and go, gee, that's a shame, and then have them call us because you now have an inside track on how this thing works. You guys like that so far? I thought you might like that. Okay, now there's all sorts of legal stuff that goes along with it that talks about how the trust's not liable for any, any, um, any issues and so on and how the trustee is exempt from any issues. We don't have to deal with all that right now. The three things I want you to remember though is that to create your wealth and preserve it, you gotta have three things, asset protection, tax benefits, and privacy, right? Okay, all right. So. Chuck Feeney, the, the book that was written about him is called The Billionaire Who Wasn't. Phenomenal book, really cool book. The deal with Chuck is this. He made literally billions of dollars with DFS. 
and it's a shadow of what it once was. Um, uh, Louis Vuitton now owns the company, and it's, it's a whole different ball game right now. But he made billions of dollars, put everything into a trust secretly, and gave it all away. So he, he and he lived very meager life. He didn't. I mean, he could have lived a very stunning life. He lived in a small apartment here in the city, flew coach in the airplane. What's that? Um, and um, but it was amazing. And the deal was that when he donated his money to schools and hospitals and so on, it was donated in confidentiality. If they breached the confidentiality, they had to give the money back. It was really interesting. It was really interesting. But he was a billionaire, but with everything in a trust, he controlled the money, but he was broke. You guys got that? So it gives you the ability to have the inside track on everything, but again, not be a target. You could win a lawsuit against him all day long. Doesn't matter because they can't touch anything that you have if it's not yours anymore. You guys follow that? So go ahead, sue me. You win. Congratulations. What do you got to collect? Nothing. Is anybody going to take a contingency lawsuit against you under those circumstances? Not a chance in hell. They're not going to win anything. So aside from just the, the merits of the lawsuit, there's no, reason, there's no need to even worry about it because no one's going to bug you anymore. You're now bulletproof, my friends. This thing has been tested and proven for years. We, we've got legal letters that, that, you know, that have legal opinion on it, and we also have IRS PLRs, which stands for Private Letter Rulings, which basically says the IRS has given us clear uh, permission to use this structure and, 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 and adopt it and anointed it. Pretty good? Okay. See, I was a skeptic. Anybody here skeptical in the room? Yeah, okay. Kind of sounds a little bit too good to be true, and I felt that way. When I moved myself to Puerto Rico, to take the 4% income tax deal, which, was, which, which is still in place right now, I thought I was genius, because that was, that was federally regulated, it was all government, it's publicly no knowledge and all this business. I thought it was awesome. It cost 15 grand to set up. It cost multiple trips back and forth to San Juan. Now, I lived in the Caribbean before I lived in St. Croix. So moving to the Caribbean was not a big deal. But trust me, the things that you take for granted here in San Francisco, in the Bay Area, you don't take for granted there, like electricity. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's, it's different. And that's not a place that a lot of people want to live, even though it, they have great advertising. And I love Puerto Rico, don't misunderstand. If you're watching on video, it's, it's awesome. But living there is different, and it will completely disrupt your lifestyle. For the past eight years, I've lived in Thailand. I've been living in Bangkok. Now I'm moving to Australia, because I love being an expat. But th so for me to, have to actually have to fly back to meet the residency requirements, 183 days a year, or 160, 183 days a year, to be physically on the ground in Puerto Rico. Will that disrupt your life at all? I have people, I've, I've got a friend who's, who's, who's in getting involved with one of these trusts right now, where his partner is in Florida. He's had to go back and forth to Puerto Rico. Do you think that'll impact on a relationship? So this thing, when I, when I started looking for alternatives, this has been tested and proven and adopted. So it was, a, it was a complete game changer. He's left Puerto Rico. He's now back in Florida with his partner, they're happy, life is good. So there's the, it's the best alternative for us. Would you like to have an idea about how much money you could save on your taxes? Would that be cool? All right, we can do that in real time. So let's take a look at what that's gonna be. If you pull out your phones, the first time someone has actually probably told you in a, tr in, a, in a session to actually take your phones out, right? You take your phones out and text the word SAVE to 954-637-8010, if you do that now, You'll get a series of texts back and forth. We actually talk to you, okay, uh, through the marvels of modern technology. Thank you, Twilio. Um, and we'll ask you for five data points, and we'll send you what your savings will be. Now, it's obviously, it's a range um, based on what you're saying, but that'll give you a good idea about what this will actually do for you. So if you go to that number, sa saved at 954-637-8010, that should be faxed back to you. If it's not, we'll, we'll email it to you. We're, we've had some technology questions about them this morning, uh, but we'll get all your data that way. Uh, so I can give you the right answer. If you, do, if you want to do it online, you can go to asktws.com forward slash SFBW, San Francisco Blockchain Week. And if you have people that you think will fit this, that would be great for this, then you can do that as well. Um, and of course, the best thing to do will be come visit us at our booth, which is at, when you walk into the exhibit hall, it's to the far left, we have this giant video screen, almost a little bit, little bit smaller than that one with a whole bunch of cool stuff in it. So we'll be able to answer all your questions on that. Um, by the way, let me give you also a little bit of, of a heads up. Your accountant doesn't know about this, I promise you, because there's only 30,000 of these and it's only been done through certain particular individuals. So they don't know. If someone doesn't know about something, are they going to say yes or no? 
Right, no is the safest way to do it, right? They don't know it. Just ask your accountant what, what their net worth is and how much they paid in tax. If they paid tax, it's probably not the right accountant. <laughs> attorneys, I love attorneys, but again, unless they've reviewed the documentation, they can't make an opinion on it. And most attorneys that are, that are in business are not structured for tax as well. They're not tax geniuses. They don't even know what 643B is. So you wanna make sure that when we look at this, we look at what the benefit is and how it's gonna change your life, and we're happy to talk to those guys as well. Make sense? So I want you to look at what those savings will be. In the meantime, I want, to, I want you to visualize what your life will look like when the money that you would have paid in tax can be used in any way you want, whether it's your kid's education, whether it's holidays, whether it's buying a new house or furnishing your house, whether it's, it's uh, defining it for a charity that you care about. You can change the world with the money that you're putting into other places. Does that make sense? So I call it self-directed taxes. Self-directed taxes. Fully legal, fully cool, fully proven. Good? You guys like that? Okay, you guys, you guys good? All right, this is like the quietest crowd I've ever had. Um, so without being a further evangelist, if you guys have questions, if you guys want to play and you want to hear more about this and how we can apply to you specifically, come visit us, visit us at the booth. My team is there now. Uh, once again, we're in the main, in the main exhibit hall um, towards, the, the, towards the back. It's the big video screen, uh, and it's, it's, if you, when you walk in, it's on the far left at the end of one of the aisles. Got it? All right, cool. Well, with that, with that said, I will thank you guys for being with us today. My name is Ken Krell, TotalWealthStrategies.com. Go ahead and get your, your, uh, your numbers done. We'd love to see what you can save and just message us back. Otherwise, we'll see you at the booth. Thanks for coming, you guys. Okay.